Good evening, our dear viewers. Welcome yet again to another episode of Health and Lifestyle on AIDS TV. I am here with my colleague, Dr. Doreen Nako. I am Dr. Victoria. Today we are going to continue our series on hearing health and it will culminate in celebration of World Hearing Day, which is on March 3rd. Uh, last time we talked about the causes of hearing, we talked about how to suspect that you have a problem with your hearing, and then we touched a bit on how to protect your hearing. Today, we want to tackle what to expect when you go in to see your hearing, your ENT with a hearing problem. And we're going to start off with a, prob a question that came in from one of our viewers. You did not leave your name, but um, Dr. Doreen has the question, and then it will lead us into talking about what to expect. The other thing we are going to talk about briefly today is some of the management options that are available. And we'll have a brief demonstration for you. Thank you. Over to you, Dawn. Thank you, Victoria. And good evening, viewers. Welcome back again to Health and Lifestyle. Uh, this is the second part of our series on hearing loss, as Vicky mentioned. Um, so our viewer left a long question. And uh, maybe I should read it as it is. Mm -hmm. A very good afternoon, Doctor. I just received this. That was our previous flyer. And since I'm one of the victims, I have wished to know something better. I got a problem with hearing last year, but one, and I tried my best to get treatment. But I was not successful until I became totally deaf. Whenever I would come back from the hospital, after reaching home as I used the medicine, the problem would just continue with my hearing dropping. As I talk now, I don't hear anything at all, even if it's the loudest voice or sound from the speakers, even the disco. Mm -hmm. I can't hear anything like the rhythm, but I just hear something beating only. All along, I have been using only one ear since childhood, of which I came to know while I was about nine years old. And now the one that was hearing is the one that got a problem while it was knocked by, oh, while it was knocked by the edge of a table as I was trying to get up while I was mopping in the room. Looks like she had a, she had a brief accident. Uh, surprisingly, I didn't feel any pain at all, but just there came in a different noise that filled all over my head, hence keeping on increasing and thus losing my sense of hearing later. I hope to receive your response and I thank you very much. I'm interested in knowing how best I can get out of this problem according to how I've explained my problem and how I feel as per now. I tried a number of medicines, but I didn't see any change. Well, uh, our esteemed viewer, thank you so much for your question. Uh, you raise, uh, I think, three different things right in there. You have the hearing problem, mm -hmm. you have the noise in the ears that started following uh, an accident. Mm -hmm. oh, actually, there's probably even more than three. Mm -hmm. And then there is the loss in one ear since mm -hmm. childhood, and subsequently yeah. now the loss in the other ear. Last time when we discussed the causes of hearing loss, I think we did actually forget to talk about trauma yes. or accidents. And sometimes they can be major accidents, such as a road traffic accident, you hit mm -hmm. your head, you get something going through your ear and you mm -hmm. lose your hearing. But there can also be something that you literally treat as minor. Like she says, she just bumped her head at the edge of a table and she felt no pain, didn't think there was a problem, and subsequently mm -hmm. developed tinnitus. So trauma is one of them. And if we go back and we remember the structure of the ear ref yes. in reference to our, our last episode, um, when you remember the structure of the ear, the ear is housed within a bone. Mm -hmm. And the ear is literally all you're hearing tends to begin in the middle ear. Yes. So my assumption is she, when she banged her head, mm -hmm. something happened and she may have either fractured or cracked the bone that houses oh, yeah. the hearing. Yes. Um, I'm so sorry that you already had one ear and now even your second ear is, is really not working well right now and you're struggling with the tinnitus. But I want to assure you that there is usually something we can do to help. However, knowing how to help you is going to start with 
an examination yeah, and say your ENT at that point. Mm -hmm. And I think that will probably lead us into what we would do for you if you came in to see, what, to see us about this. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Doreen. Um, we sympathize with um, all our viewers who may have a problem with hearing. It is something that is not easy to deal with, and more so when it is both ears. We understand the pain, the anxiety, and the stigma that comes with it. And one of the things that makes it harder is in our country, people are still very stigmatized when they have hearing loss. Um, there is a tendency to think that this person will not function. Um, some people think you're not brilliant to manage daily tasks, mundane tasks. Um, sometimes these people are hidden away. However, where we are going now, we are realizing and we have learned that these people are very brilliant. We have had several patients that have gone all the way to campus, very brilliant individuals. Mm -hmm. They perform very well, they do well in life. And so not all hope is not lost for yeah. a person with hearing loss. You can function in life and you can have a fulfilling life. That's it. When you come in to see your ENT, the first thing we are going to do is take a history. And that history is going to involve things that, questions on things that we know might cause the hearing loss, how long you have had it, which side of the, which, which ear, whether it is one or both. Um, is it total loss or you can hear some things? What situations make the hearing worse? Are there extra noises? So most of the things we talked about last time. And then we shall do an examination. Basic examination starts with looking in your ear to see whether you have wax, <laughs> whether there might be a foreign body, whether there might be an infection. The first thing you want to do is make sure that there are no preventive causes of hearing loss in this patient. Second thing we are trying to determine is whether the ear looks normal or abnormal. Many times we will find abnormalities, but also many times we'll equally find an ear that looks normal. So for today, we are going to show you what a normal ear looks like. And then maybe when you go to see an ENT, if you have the privilege of, if you're lucky enough and they're able to show you what your ear looks like, you'll be able to understand what abnormal looks like and what the implications are. So um, today, though, you, I don't know whether you're lucky enough or unlucky enough to see what my ear looks like on the inside. Um, we're going to be showing you the different parts of the ear based on that picture that we saw. And Dr. Doreen is going to do the examination on me as it would happen when you come in. Okay. Uh, maybe one last bit of emphasis, please, when you come in, try to be as honest as possible when we ask these questions. Tell us your biggest how how the hearing loss has affected you the most mm -hmm. what you have tried even when it is local hubs it's important for us mm -hmm. to know and sometimes we ask questions that are dating way back um, especially for children way back into the pregnancy pre-pregnancy relatives but there is importance towards that in helping us understand the cause and probably also in way we in what we are going to do to manage the hearing loss mm -hmm. okay so dr. Victoria being my patient today so um, there are many ways we can examine the ear mm -hmm. and uh, it starts with just a basic inspection of your ear. We just want to take a look at the ear. And the reason we are doing this is sometimes we have abnormalities outside of the ear that we can see. There are some people who are unfortunate enough to be born with either a malformed ear, an absent ear, or sometimes you've even just had an accident. You've lost part of your ear or even the what we call the ear canal. That little path, path that enters into the ear is actually blocked off. So that's important for us to see and understand. The second thing we would do there on is to take a look inside the ear. Now there are many ways to do that. I know you've seen us wearing our headlights. Sometimes we look like miners. 
they are quite big but we can use just a basic light to take a look inside the ear we can use um, something like this which is very common which is what we call a handheld otoscope um, some doctors usually even general doctors will have one of these and we like this a lot for the children they are less intimidating but if you do come to us at Atlas usually we have the privilege of having what we call a video otoscope and what the video otoscope does is it allows me to take a look at your ear on the screen it allows you to be able to see what I am saying so if we take a look at Dr. Victoria's ear Oh, I want you to see. <laughs> All right. If we take a look at her ear, remember when we looked at the ear prior, we said when we look inside the ear, we're only seeing the outer part of the ear all the way to where your eardrum should be. We shouldn't be able to see beyond the eardrum if the eardrum is nice and healthy. And she has a healthy ear. I took, I took a look at her ear. So, taking a look inside her ear, this is what we'd like to see. So, this is the skin in the pathway of the ear and it does have some hairs and that is a healthy skin and sometimes especially older people you'll come and there's a bit of wax when it's a little bit of wax we are not concerned it's when this has blocked the entire pathway and we can't see beyond but what we are most interested in saying is your eardrum over there and that is a beautiful healthy eardrum mm -hmm. it's intact I usually tell my patient it looks like one of those white coveras mm -hmm. that we buy things in and when you pull it in back and when you look right through it you tend to see a little bit of the shadows of the structures behind but we shouldn't be able to see them clearly and it should have that reflecting light there that's normal and so that would be a healthy ear and that's usually the first thing we're going to do so if we do that and it's absolutely normal meaning there is nothing obvious that is preventing you from hearing there is nothing blocking the pathway the eardrum is beautiful then we have to go on and now think maybe there's something wrong <clears throat> maybe we need to get a sense of where your hearing is mm -hmm. and so there are some things we can do very quickly in the clinic and one of them is using this little contraption the tuning <laughs> fork <laughs> and uh, I, I guess musicians would have an idea of what this is and even mm. in school sometimes I think we got to see what a tuning fork looks yeah, like maybe high school did music yeah. you would have seen it mm. and there's several different types of forks mm. but this is the common one that we use so this fork is not a test of hearing Mm -hmm. The fork is just there to help us get a sense of of the two ears. Are they balanced? Mm -hmm. Is one ear hearing and the other one is not hearing? Could the problem be on the outside and the middle or the, mm -hmm. could the problem be all the way on the inside? So it just gives me suspicion really to understand what's going on mm -hmm. in your ears. And I don't think there's any benefit in doing it. It's yeah. not painful, I have to say. <laughs> no. It's quick. Um, and usually the doctor has to hit themselves to try and get it working. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, those are the quick things that we are going to do. Sometimes we may go ahead and examine your nose. Because yeah. remember we talked about allergies being related to hearing. And also depending on what we saw in mm -hmm. the ear, we may be inclined to check a little further check your mm -hmm. nose check your throat check your neck so that is a full physical exam and that's the mm -hmm. quick part yes yes so the non-quick part <laughs> the non-quick part <laughs> is the true assessment of your hearing mm -hmm. and um, you're going to see a small video of us carrying out a hearing test yes. now that is the key part in really telling us where your hearing lies mm -hmm. there are different kinds of tests we do but this one test that we that you're seeing in that clip mm -hmm. is the standard. the standard test for hearing however to be able to do it usually we prefer to do it um, we can do it from children around the age of six depending mm -hmm. on how well they will understand the instruction mm -hmm. but there are also different ways we do play uh, testing for children and then we can also do it in an adult who can understand instructions mm -hmm. if if you can't hear don't worry about it we will write 
we will use sign language mm -hmm. we will use um, signals to show you what to do and the, what we are aiming to do is for us remember when we talked about hearing what it is yes. true hearing it's that soft point where you can actually hear something mm. and that's what we are aiming to measure mm. and if you see what we're doing with uh, our assistant every time she had the sound either she responded mm -hmm. with one of the responders yes mm. or if that becomes complicated it's not working we don't have one they will ask you just raise your hand, yeah. and we find that works out much better for very old people and also for the very young. <laughs> yeah, well, not that really, really young. No, no, no. The, the, no, no. the toddlers <laughs> five going downwards will usually look for a response from the child because usually a child will hear a noise and they'll react. So the babies, or the, not the babies, the babies have a different test. But the toddlers, when you make a noise, they'll, yeah. they'll try to try and, you know, what was that? What just happened? So that's the play audiometry that we so we'll distract them with something. Then we shall produce the noise in their ear. When they hear it, we expect a reaction. When they don't hear it, there'll be no reaction. So it, it, it can be done, but there's a bit of modification. And so because of that, when you bring a child, we will usually book you for either a whole morning or a whole afternoon because it takes time and you do not want to rush it. They will get agitated, they will get tired, they get fed up, they stop responding. So if you rush it, it, it you, it's not reliable. Same thing with very old people. They, they get tired. Sometimes they'll sleep during the test because it's very quiet but just for you to understand it's not a 30 minute deal when we make the appointment it takes at least minimum two to three hours for an adult um, just for the testing for a child it can be a full three hours yes i guess you <coughs> enter a little bit into um, how long will the test take um, so the test requires specialized equipment mm. it requires specialized training to be able to do it well and also it requires the patient to be cooperative mm -hmm. and be able to follow instructions mm -hmm. you will see a small clip of what the setup is like we have very specialized equipment but we also have a specialized um, room if I should to call it a sound booth That's where we carry out the test yes it does look like a music studio <laughs> and actually actually in building it we had to find someone and say we need a music studio so it should be dead quiet there's a certain level of quietness that we measure for that room mm -hmm. now the tests um, you mentioned about two to three hours and I agree if the patient is slower if they are older if they are mm -hmm. too young it could take longer but many a times if a um, young adult say like you it could be anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes yes and also depending on how bad the hearing is mm -hmm. it also changes there's so many different little things we have to do here mm -hmm. and there to try and get your true sense of hearing mm -hmm. so when all that is said and done we will end up with a result that we plot on a graph just as this this is a teaching graph <laughs> your graph won't have all these little dolls in it and this is what we call an audiogram why we plot this is this is the result we are giving you to walk away with mm -hmm. but also this is the result that is going to help you understand how good or how poor mm -hmm. your hearing is now we have cutoffs for for this um we have cutoffs uh if you look at that graph on the what we call the y-axis and then we have the x-axis so these would be the different sounds the person keeps hearing some are high some are low mm -hmm. and then this is the level of loudness mm -hmm. that you require to hear them when we draw your curve for mm -hmm. example um it I'll, gets louder going down it gets louder going down for example if i tested your hearing okay we plot for different things and everything ends up just around there okay it's above the pink line there so this is above 20. we like everything to be above 20. Mm. when everything is above 20 your hearing is normal okay 
that means you can hear trees uh, when the wind is blowing through them you can hear mm -hmm. the leaves rustle you can hear fine birds singing in the trees you mm -hmm. can hear a whisper that is a good place to mm -hmm. be the lower we go the poorer your hearing mm -hmm. and if you look at this they try to give you examples of how loud the normal sounds we listen to in life are like a child crying is quite loud a child crying mm -hmm. is at about 60 that is an infant really now throwing a proper tantrum or a hard <laughs> infant <laughs> and mm -hmm. they're crying at around 60 that should be loud enough for you to be uncomfortable enough for you to try and respond to that mm -hmm. child while um there are things we don't have in okay maybe music pianos are quite loud like if you go to church mm -hmm. when you're playing guitars and pianos those are mm -hmm. quite loud and then we have things like helicopters Mm -hmm. If it comes in and now you can't even hear the helicopter, this is where we start to say you're likely deaf in that ear. Mm -hmm. So anything below 90, we call a profound deafness. So that is the person who characterize as functionally deaf. Mm -hmm. So my colleague who sent the question, you say you are deaf in one ear mm -hmm. and the other ear is going out as well. Mm -hmm. Before we have this, we cannot I'm clinically saying. declare you deaf. Mm -hmm. What you may have is hearing that is not functional. So we need to run one of these to know where your hearing lies mm -hmm. and also that helps us determine what we How can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. So this is the key test really that we should run. Mm -hmm. There are some other tests that we run but they are usually to help us Advanced decide on what we can and cannot do and if we are mm -hmm. trying to establish where the issue is coming from. Mm -hmm. But this is a good place to start mm -hmm. for anyone with hearing loss. Okay, um, so we talked about basically what we really do yes. when someone comes in minus the management. Um, before we go on to the management, we know that these services are available mm. in Mara here at Atlas Audio and Medical. But where else in the country can someone get these services? Because we know our viewers are on YouTube. You might even be outside of the country. Yes. <laughs> um, so like we mentioned these are specialized services mm -hmm. we are lucky to be able to avail them here so we at atlas audio and medical we can do both the basic right from just a chat with your doctor <laughs> to a nice exam you can get your hearing test done we can do both the basic and the advanced, advanced hearing mm -hmm. tests um, you could also get hearing testing done at the hospital Mbara Regional Referral Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we have challenges there, but uh, most times we are able to at least have a screening test, at, at, at least a screening test. At the minimum. At the minimum. Mm -hmm. And that gives us a sense of where your hearing is. So we have a diagnostic and then we have a screening. Mm -hmm. A screening is usually a good place to start. Then we can declare whether you need to do further on a diagnostic. Mm -hmm. uh, the other places, um, unfortunately, I can't think of another place in the southwest. Mm -hmm. We may be the only two places you could get a test that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, the other places are in Kampala. I think there's Kampala Audiology and Speech and Center, Center, definitely Mongolo Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, I think Kisenyi Health Center for, mm -hmm. and I think there are probably a couple of other places. Uh, mm -hmm. Gulu, yes, I know. Yes. I think Gulu, there is mm -hmm. a clinic where you can get some testing done. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Limbale. So, in all honesty, at least in every region, there is a place. It may just it's not be place. easily accessible, but mm -hmm. there is definitely a place. Mm -hmm. Yes. And most of these places are going to be privately based, but the general hospitals will have some sort of screening that can be done. Yes. I think Malago is able to do a diagnostic yes test for you okay so now that we know where these services are availed when our patient comes in yes we run our tests mm -hmm. there is no prevent well there may be preventable causes there may be the non-preventable causes and when we looked at the preventable causes last time we talked about infection wax um what else do you foreign, think about bodies, foreign bodies, fluid, fluid in, the in the ear. Those can be treated. You'll be given medication or we shall take out the wax, we'll take out the foreign body from the clinic. That's e that's the very easy part. Now, when we examine a patient and the ears look normal, but the hearing is out, or they may look abnormal. We talked about not having an ear, 
um, having part of the ear not there. Mm -hmm. It could even be deep inside the ear and we don't know what's going on. Um, we will run the tests. Sometimes we may ask you to do a CT scan or an MRI um, depending on what the tests show us. When we put all those results together and we decide that this person has hearing impairment, um, there are different types, we are not going to go into them. There are things that we can do. And the most popular that the patients will even walk in and tell you, I have come for this, is we will give you a hearing aid. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the hearing aids. But other than the hearing aids, there are some other options for patients. So among the preventable causes, there are some infections that require surgical management. And these are the patients that we will insist on having a CT scan for, and we will do the procedure. The procedure many times is really to give you a safe ear and it, it is rare that we will tell you that your hearing is going to improve because sometimes it's unpredictable. There are some times when we shall do the surgery and your hearing improves tremendously. Other times it may not change. So depending on the goal of the procedure, we will have a conversation with you and tell you, look here, your ear is unsafe. It is making it very possible for you to get maybe meningitis, which would kill you much faster. And so the purpose of doing the surgery is to give you a safe ear, prevent further infection most of the time. There are other procedures that can be done, particularly to improve hearing. And that is a discussion that would be had when you're here. And we can talk about goals and expectations, which is a big part of managing hearing loss. But now on to the other side that I know people are really, really interested in hearing about. It is the hearing aids and other such devices. I'm going to ask Dr. Doreen to take us through <clears throat> these devices, we have quite a number, um, assessment for them, preparation for them, who is a candidate for the aid, who wouldn't function well with an aid, and what other options can be given. Okay, so you, you open a whole new chapter, <laughs> hearing aids, um, it's, it's, it's very wide. Some of us know them, some of us don't know them, many of us are afraid of them, and many of us don't also know how many options we have available to us. Mm -hmm. So hearing aids, to begin with, is in the most lay term possible, mm -hmm. is a personal microphone for you. That is the easiest way I can put it, yes. For you as an individual, for your ear as an individual. Mm -hmm. um, remember we talked about the hearing levels and we said above 20 is normal. Anything below 20, you're starting to struggle with your hearing. And it can be just one ear, but it could be both ears. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think last time we mentioned different types of hearing loss. Yes. And uh, we have what we call <coughs> conductive, where the problem is in the outer and the middle ear. And then we have what we call a sensory neuro, where the problem could be in the inner ear or in, in the, the brain. brain. Mm -hmm. And then we have the mixed, where you have a little bit of both. But it doesn't make so much of a difference. Now, you asked a question, who is eligible for yes. hearing aids? Mm -hmm. It's both an easy and a difficult question. <laughs> yeah. I would say anyone with hearing loss is eligible for hearing aid. Mm. But yet, the worse your hearing is, sometimes the, wa the less likely you are to be eligible for our conventional hearing aids. Mm. <laughs> there are some other types of devices that are more advanced mm -hmm. that we actually surgically implant in the ear mm -hmm. and that is for when things have gone to the profound levels mm -hmm. but today this is the okay, most I'm interesting right. part and we're only going to talk about this so let's say let's assume you have come in you have your hearing problem mm -hmm. it's bothering you you are not communicating with family mm -hmm. you need to watch your tv at full volume and everyone is saying it's just making so much noise you're mm -hmm. missing conversations you sit in meetings and you can't pick you sit in church you're struggling mm -hmm. and you've come in and we've run the test 
Okay, and maybe you have a moderate to severe yeah. loss. It's significant that we mm -hmm. need to act on it. What are your options? What we are going to discuss is one, we have to help you understand mm -hmm. the type of loss you have, mm -hmm. where it may be coming from, and how it is going to bother you. Okay. A few times we are able to predict the cause of that loss. Sometimes we are also able to predict what will happen in the near future. Because for when some it people will get it will worsen. Oh, yes, oh. it would worsen. In a few cases, we had experiences where it actually improves a little bit with mm -hmm. times. Yes. So now, if it comes down to us discussing your hearing aids, mm -hmm. then we discuss the options you have. Mm -hmm. I need to emphasize: a hearing aid is just a personal microphone. The style is just how that microphone has been packaged. Mm -hmm. Depending on the type of loss you have, the severity of the loss that you have, mm -hmm. and also the, the size of your ear, if yeah. I should say the structure of your ear, which we shall discuss how we come to that point, we may, be, we may decline from giving you a specific style, mm -hmm. and we may encourage a certain kind of style. The poorer your hearing, the more power you need in your hearing aid. And that means your hearing aid is likely going to be slightly bigger than the usual mm -hmm. because we need to carry a lot more power. A lot more power in the aid. Yes. The better your hearing, if it's poor but it's not too bad, then mm -hmm. we can probably discuss fancier styles of hearing. Now, um, the hearing aids we have available readily at Atlas Audio and Medical. They come in several different colors. The colors we can discuss whichever you want. <laughs> Usually we can we are able to make it work. Yes. Um, people like them stylish. The more stylish, the more likely you are to wear it. Mm -hmm. However, we have different types mm -hmm. and uh, usually these ones that you see, the more colorful ones, purple, pink, green. Right. Yeah. That is a line that is designed for children. But we have had some adults request for them and we are happy mm -hmm. to avail it for you if it's available in that particular type. Mm -hmm. The other ones are, these are the common ones that we see. And this is the common hearing aid that you're going to see on mm -hmm. most people. This is the feared one. This is the hated one. <laughs> yes. Hated because, because previously mm -hmm. it was analog. I mean, just a, an example of our phones. We came from our analog phones, Kabiriti, we went to the... Aerial. Yes, with an aerial, and then we went now to our digital phones, their smartphones <coughs> now. They do a lot more. Um, these are now digital aids. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by digital aids? It means it's a lot more comfortable. It is going to give you a boost in the hearing without the comfort that the analog used to give. Mm -hmm. The analog would give you that annoying feedback noise. Mm -hmm. The louder it gets, the more uncomfortable it gets because it just amplifies everything around you. Mm -hmm. This will cut out the noise in the background mm -hmm. so that you concentrate on the speech that is coming to you. Mm -hmm. The newer ones now, even, adjust, self-adjust when you walk into an environment. They can sense quieter environment and they will adjust the volume. Yes. And you do not have to struggle, okay, now wait, now it's, I need to change my programs, now I need to do that. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can discuss a lot more of the technicalities that we can give you, mm -hmm. but these are more comfortable, they are lighter, definitely. <laughs> they are better colors, they, are, they come in as small as that and even smaller. Uh, they come in better colors, if I should say, better designs. Mm -hmm. However, what's different? Um, if I could have that back briefly. Like that. Mm -hmm. That is not suited for you, Dr. Vicky. <laughs> You're going to make my audience <laughs> feel unhappy. <laughs> so there is that small part that enters your ear, which mm -hmm. we call the impression. And this is the part that most people really are most uncomfortable with because they tend to be big and very uncomfortable. It's a weird fit. It's a strange yeah. fit, but mm -hmm. technology has made them a lot better. You can see that is clear. Um, we have them in such a way that we can even have glitter inside them. Mm -hmm. If you'd like them to have glitter, especially for children, they can be colored. Some are green, some are blue, depending. We can, can try to make it. Color. Yeah, we try mm -hmm. to make them as comfortable as possible coming from where you mentioned the stigma surrounding hearing yes. aids. Now, for 
some people who are even more cautious uh, aesthetically cosmetically or you say I work in an environment where I would rather not be seen with a hearing aid mm -hmm. we could discuss a uh, smaller aid even mm -hmm. one that no one is basically going to see I mean we've seen the Bluetooth pieces we've seen the wireless headsets that everyone is wearing and now we have hearing aids that look exactly like that mm -hmm. if I met you I wouldn't be any wiser whether it is a Bluetooth piece uh, uh -huh. a yes. headset or it's a hearing aid mm -hmm. and this is an example unfortunately it's coming in <coughs> pink I'll put it here so that you can get a better shot of it and that fits all the way inside the ear I have to put a disclaimer Mm -hmm. The poorer your hearing, the, the less likely we are to give you something like that. Mm -hmm. Because we're fitting so much technology, so much small parts yes. in this. Mm -hmm. And if you need too much power, it can't fit in here. Mm -hmm. Here we have um, a better picture that shows us the different types of aids. The small ones. It's really different styles of aids. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we have um, this and this are the ones we've been looking at, such as that, which we call behind the ear. They're the common ones we see. Then we have this and this and this and that. Those are the ones that fit inside the ear. As you can tell from there, I'm sorry, we, we, we do not have one with a black ear that we can use so for better um, visibility. But that they come in variable sizes mm -hmm. and some are literally not even visible okay. completely inside yes like the one we are calling the iic if you look at their ear you can you can't see a thing mm -hmm. there and we have those that are barely visible but you don't have a whole thing to wear behind mm -hmm. the ear mm -hmm. but like i mentioned you can come and we discuss the style but the style is the least is the last thing we talk about yeah we talk about where your hearing is what, you need. what power you need mm. and what is possible for you what is depending on our producer andrew has just asked henry henry, henry. <laughs> henry. henry. i'm sorry henry <laughs> um has just asked an interesting question um if both ears are not hearing do you need one aid or two aids and the answer to this is, well, I'll let you answer that. <laughs> I always have this trick that I say to every patient, two ears are better than one. And there's a reason God gave us two. Yeah. But again, in our setting, understanding the economic um, difficulties, understanding the, the, well, not even just stigma, but the cautiousness in making that decision to take on a new gadget, mm -hmm. one ear is still better than none. Mm -hmm. So what do we mean? You, if you have a loss in two ears, our advice is to get two aids in the same sitting. You are all the better for it. The two ears, one, help you be able to understand where sound is coming from, mm -hmm. which we call localization. That's why when someone calls you, you can know this is to the right, mm -hmm. even if they're at the back. Mm -hmm. It helps you amplify or have more power to the mm. speech that is coming in so you hear it better with better clarity mm. it also takes away especially for the clients who have ringing in the ear it helps with dampening that ringing because if Much better one e if both ears are ringing and I put an aid in one this will do well yeah, and then the other one will seem to even be loud louder than it was yes but Two ears are always better than one. But in the event that we only can amplify one mm -hmm. ear at a time, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say at a time because usually we're going to advise yes. you to think about getting an aid within a year of mm -hmm. the other one at most, is we will usually either select your better ear or the mm -hmm. worst ear, depending on what we saw on the hearing test, and we can advise you. But usually we will have a chat with you we've had clients who have insisted i want this one and i'm thinking mm -hmm. this will do you much better like i want this one they say it's okay yeah. and so we will amplify that one until you come back in two weeks because there's a follow-up program mm -hmm. fitting you with a hearing aid is not a one-off it's a journey and we continue to be present for you i guess we fit in with our motto that is with you always yes 
once we fit you don't go home be unhappy with what you have and just not come back we follow up with phone calls we want you to come back and tell us what's working it's what's not working yeah. we want to be able to troubleshoot with you we want you to be as independent as possible but we also want you to realize value for your mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. so if we look after the hearing aid well if it's working well for you we sell only new hearing aids unfortunately we don't have refurbished mm -hmm. but that aid is good for at least five years optimally mm. and if usually well about seven years of, yeah if well mm -hmm. taken care of then about mm -hmm. usually seven years unless something changes with your hearing or with the aid then yes. we'll need to think about yes. getting a different one and when you come in we actually educate you on how to care for your hearing aids so and this is not to say that we only attend to people that have gotten aids from us yes. wherever you have gotten your hearing aid from as long as you're within Barra we can offer aid care for you and we can teach you how better to use and take care of your and hearing aid yes. and Henry I think you should be one of the people to watch out for what is coming <laughs> probably in the next week or so Yes. Lastly, maybe also about the digital aids, I'm going to speak about the aids we carry at Atlas Audio and Medical and we carry Phonak from the Haas mm -hmm. group. Um, mm -hmm. It's a Swiss group, then, yes, that uh, from whom we get the hearing aids. The digital ones currently, the advantage we have is even if your hearing drops mm -hmm. in the subsequent one or two years, most often than not, we are able to program the same hearing aid for you yes. and just increase the power that it's covering. Mm -hmm. So it means that it's capital intensive to buy the first aid, but subsequently it's a lot cheaper you may not for you. necessarily need to keep buying. Yes. And maybe just to simplify um, what Dr. Doreen is trying to explain, she talked about the analog and then talked about the digital. The analog cannot be programmed at all. So what does that mean? When you come in and we have plotted your graph, okay? At say one frequency, you may be hearing just at 20. Another frequency you're hearing at 60. And then like the variable hearing levels for different sound frequencies. What the analog does, it will increase the volume of all those frequencies by 20, let's say. So this frequency where you hear at 20 will be increased by 20, so it will become uncomfortably loud for just that one frequency. Because you're trying to increase even the one that is at 90 by some degree so that you can hear. What happens with the digital is we can program it according to the different hearing levels of the different frequencies. So we connect it to the programming software in the computer and we program it for you. If your hearing ever changed, say at frequency 1000, you came in and you were at 40 and maybe three years down the road you have dropped to 80. All we have to do is get that aid, take a new audio audiogram for you and then reprogram it so you don't have to buy another aid which is not the case with the analogs if your hearing drops you either increase the volume and it becomes uncomfortably loud or if you've reached maximum now you have to buy a different aid so that's basically the difference yes disclaimer it has to be that the hearing aid you have is still able to cover yes, the loss within which you ever the loss we can talk about that a little bit more when you come in yeah. or if you do come in and i'm going to say at atlas we are happy to have you come in just for a chat it's not mm -hmm. a full consultation it's not an examination you just want to have a talk about hearing aids options available some people have come to us with their test done from elsewhere mm -hmm. and we have said okay maybe this is still a good enough test to use or mm -hmm. we need a repeat test before we give you a hearing aid because mm -hmm. your test should be at least within six months of when you last took it for us to be able to use it comfortably mm -hmm. so feel free um, if you want to have a chat for yourself for your relative for your grandmother for your child or you're just curious about how much else we can do uh, feel free to come in 
you can either have a chat with either of us yes. or even with our oh, office yes, manager sure. she is able to give you a little bit of information on that yes thank you very much now that we have covered all of that <laughs> um, what happens to someone who cannot who is not a candidate for a hearing aid so not being a candidate for hearing aid, um, usually that means your hearing levels have gone to a point where we, we are lying when we say we are going to give you a hearing aid and it should give you good hearing. Mm. We have to always discuss the expectations of the hearing aid. Mm. The hearing aid does not only serve to amplify sounds or to improve your hearing. Mm. For people like our colleague or our friend who sent in the question, we actually have hearing aids that help with that tinnitus, that ringing that you feel in your head mm -hmm. and helps to adapt or to mask it, to dampen it so that you can feel less bothered or less yes. cancel it out. Well, uh, yes, a little bit, yes. So we can use them for tinnitus masking or tinnitus mm -hmm. management. Mm -hmm. But in the event that you came in and we're at that point where we can no longer discuss a hearing aid, mm -hmm. then we are going to have to discuss the more advanced um, types of hearing uh, devices. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are discussing the advanced not because you're not aidable with this, but because yeah. maybe you don't have an ear. Mm -hmm. because that also changes everything so usually then at this point we are discussing what we call the surgical devices the ones we have to operate and put in and that's a whole chat for another day but <laughs> i rather <laughs> have in person because before we get there we have to know what we can and cannot do mm -hmm. but also there are still um people especially i'm going to speak about people who have been in the deaf community for a long period of yes. time mm -hmm. you were born deaf and now you want to explore this at age um, 18, yeah. 20. Usually at this point, we may not be able to change anything, especially if you have no perception of sound whatsoever. Yeah. Um, the, the nerves in the body that transmit sound to the brain are just like your leg and your arm. Mm -hmm. If you don't use them for a while, they will cease to remember what to do. They will lose energy, they will lose power. Yes. So in the event that we have a child who is born without hearing, we want to act either with a hearing aid or with a surgical, a surgical implant devices. before they are six years of age. Mm -hmm. Research has shown that if your nerve hasn't been working, it hasn't been trying to transmit sound for at least a period of about five to eight years, it mm -hmm. tends to medically we call it atrophy or it reduces in size and stops to function well. Mm -hmm. So the earlier we act on it, the better. Mm -hmm. And many a times we have seen patients come to us, we run our tests, we discuss and we're like, okay, this is where your hearing is. We are able to give you a hearing aid. You should mm -hmm. try to get a hearing aid mm -hmm. because the faster we get it, the better for you. And they say, I can still hear, I will wait. And then you come back to us a year or two later and it has dropped even further. Mm -hmm. The hearing aid serves to help continue stimulating mm. the nerve and the brain. Mm. So you're likely to remain where you are much longer than the person who waits and drops further. Because the longer we wait, the less mm. we are sending, the less the nerve remembers what it's supposed to do. So basically getting a hearing aid is not an emergency, but it is advised. It is urgent that you get it, yes, if advised. Early enough. Yes, so that you can protect some of your hearing. So what about, um, if the, you've talked about the cost of, of the AIDS and they're quite pricey um, for majority of our population, majority of our patients might come and say, oh, this is so expensive, I cannot afford this, I'm not able to, to, to get an aid or some, because of the stigma within the society, they'd rather not. What services are available to them? And at this point, we may only be able to speak for Kampala and maybe Mbarara. But what, what things can be done for such patients? In know, way sure. of rehabilitation or habilitation? Are there 
like we talked about the sign language, because the main issue with hearing is not being able to communicate and not being able to be understood. So are there options where these people are able to communicate, be understood and understand other people? Um, yes, um, sign language is a whole language. Um, I, I know we have some deaf schools in the West. Um, I think there's Chegegua, there is somewhere in Nyamitiobora. Nyakayoja, sorry, not Nyamitiobora. And then, um, I'm not sure about any right within Barra, but there is a deaf society. Mm -hmm. I think they used to have an office around Pelican building. I'm not sure where they are currently. And I think they will be able to advise. I am not very mm -hmm. conversant with that. Uh, mm -hmm. In Kampala, I think there are other schools. There's Ntinda School of the Deaf. It's the one I know for sure. Yes. I'm sure there's so many others elsewhere, um, but there hasn't been a lot of energy put into it. Mm -hmm. I want to say that you're taking me towards rehabilitation, and this is definitely part of rehabilitation, mm -hmm. but um, we have, you're going to wonder that I gave this child a hearing aid while it's still signing. Sometimes we need to use both languages. We need to use the input from the ears, mm -hmm. but also they use the sign language to help them communicate faster and cope better. Mm -hmm. I guess where I'm coming from is there is no reason that someone with deafness should be kept at home, that they cannot function on their own. Mm -hmm. We need to aim to give them a level of independence. Mm -hmm. Because other than the deafness, if they have nothing else going on, they're just like you and I. Yes. And they're going to grow and they're going to be expected to be um, good citizens okay. and constructive members of society. Mm -hmm. So in all honesty, when it comes down to the hearing thing, it's about a good chat and mm -hmm. understanding on mm -hmm. what we can and cannot do. We have provided hearing aids to people in the profound levels. Mm -hmm. But why? Because I want you to be able to perceive sound so you can tell when there is danger. Yes. Because they can know a car is coming. They can know a border border is closed. They can cross a road all by themselves. Mm -hmm. And that, believe you me, is a lot for yes. independence compared to being told there's nothing we can do. Usually there is something we can do. And in the event that we can't, we would definitely get in a counselor and mm -hmm. introduce it to the deaf society yes. so that you can figure out how to survive and how to have a better quality of life, mm -hmm. if I should say. I don't know if I'm even answering your question at this yes. point. <laughs> um, I guess where, where I'm coming from is I'm hoping that we can start um, triggering our viewers to think about the deaf society as more than just their handicap you know because we we have had stories we did some research um, a few years ago actually during the lockdown or just pre-lockdown and it's, it's it's interesting what you hear from the community about people that do not hear um, we've had stories from ranging from when a child cannot hear they're the kind that other relatives will hire to take care of their cows yes on the farm uh, and yet when it comes to the side of the law someone with deafness when they commit a crime they're still convicted like a normal person so why do we have these double standards we need to treat them as normal people in the society in every aspect and not exclude them in some aspects. They can contribute meaningfully to society and we need to start the discussion or the conversation surrounding stigma um, towards deafness or hearing loss in our communities. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Vicky. Thank you very much. Uh, as she mentioned earlier, all this, we are talking a lot about hearing loss. What can we do? What is it? What is available for you? And all this is culminating, as mentioned earlier, on mm -hmm. to a celebration of World Hearing Day or acknowledgement of World Hearing Day. Many times it's a celebration. I think it's a big party. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a big party. <laughs> um, and for the theme for this year is to hear for life. Here with care. Here with care. And what does that mean? It means if you have your hearing now, little as it may be, normal as it may be, you want to protect it. You want to guard it jealously. So we want to see how can we protect our hearing. One of the other things that we didn't talk about, among the things we can offer, are what we call noise plugs. 
noise plugs, especially for people working in extra noisy environments. Um, I'm thinking welders, I'm thinking mm -hmm. people work in the clubs. <laughs> that is a yeah. lot of noise over a long period of time. Uh, people work in factories, in the noisier parts of the factories. You have to walk through several times in a day, yes. even if you're not working in that section. Mm -hmm. And it's important for you to jealously guard your hearing. You may not feel the effects today, but the effects may come on much later when you really really donate it mm -hmm. and it's terrible to lose something you had because you definitely feel the loss a yeah. lot more yeah. so in lieu of that we welcome you to acknowledge with us world hearing day we'll definitely be giving out a little bit of information as we go along so mm -hmm. keep tuned to okay. AETV check in on their page every once in a while there'll be some information that we probably couldn't cover here if we tried mm -hmm. and that said also watch out we may have something special for World Hearing Day for some of our viewers who are, we think are very high risk, risk population. Yes. Otherwise, thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you for viewing in to Health and Lifestyle on AETV. Have a good evening. <laughs>